2023, the year of bountiful blessings and turmoil. I'm on the blessing side, aren't you? I'm on the blessing side. God is going to do things greater than we can imagine, greater than we can dream. And I want to say to you that, that Satan is working overtime in our emotions. And, and I have seen that. You know, I, you know, we can't live by what we feel. We can't live by the things that we look around and see. God doesn't measure us like that. So I want to just share a few points with you. The Holy Spirit spoke to us. You know, I didn't want to be a prophet. <laughs> and I certainly didn't want to be a woman preacher. The Lord called me to preach when I was nine. And we were Baptists. So when I went forward in that service, you know, I looked at the little slots we had as a Baptist. And women didn't preach in the Baptist church so I could be a missionary. And so I checked that box. I'd be a missionary. And, and, but the thing is, um, then I met Mike. And Mike didn't want to be a missionary. So I kept breaking up with him. This is a little known story. And so I said, you know, I have to go like to Africa to preach. And he goes, I don't want to go to Africa to preach. I, you know, I'm a businessman. I, I, that, I just want to do business. And so, you know, I said, well, you know, I have to break up with you. I mean, he was gorgeous, good looking, you know, smart, you know, uh, tall, dark, and handsome. And, you know, but I had a call of God in my life. And he's saying, like, well, teach Sunday school. You know, we're Baptists, you know. <laughs> teach Sunday school, you know. Lead the choir. Yeah, I have a degree in uh, music. I'm a classical pianist. And, uh, but somehow God brought it all together and helped us get to our place. And now we know, we understand bounty. And we have learned how to both abase and abound, but I prefer abounding. Do you prefer abounding? You know, like, you know, I prefer being blessed over being in poverty. And because now we can give away so much. So this is a year of bountiful blessings. And one of the words the Lord gave us was about Goshen. Now, not everybody may know what Goshen was in the Bible. Maybe you're newbies to Jesus. But, but uh, uh, many, 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 many centuries ago, God sent his children, his, his chosen children, the Israelites, into Egypt because there was a time of famine. And in that time of famine, God gave them the best of the land. Even though Pharaoh didn't like shepherds, and they were shepherds, but God gave them a beautiful, beautiful land called Goshen. Now, the Holy Spirit has spoken to so many, many prophets that God is going to provide a Goshen for us. What does that mean? That means no matter what's happening around you, you're going to be provided for. God is going to take care of you. Amen. Yeah, clap your hands. Now, there's also going to be turmoil. But, you know, during the Great Depression, there were many millionaires made during the Depression. And I want to say, why not you? Say it. Why not you? Why not me? Okay? And, you know, some of you are thinking, oh, I can never be a millionaire. Well, that's why you're not. <laughs> and so the Lord has been encouraging us. And the Lord said that there are some states that are going to be Goshen states, and Texas is one of them. Amen? Thank God you live in Texas. I know some people over the web may live in other places, and God will bless you too. But <laughs> I had a word. I, Mike and I were just, uh, we were just in Korea. Last Sunday I preached in, in Korea. And then we went and spoke in Tulsa to a group they called the City Elders. Um, Thursday and Friday, there were doctors and business people and pastors there, incredible group of people. Anyway, we came back. But uh, uh, the Lord, and, and there I gave a word for Oklahoma, and I said, as much as it pains me to give a prophecy for Oklahoma as a Texan, I'm going to do it. But, uh, you know, that's where Texans are kind of. Territorial, I don't know what to say. Okay. So anyway, but there are going to be states that are Goshen's, and Texas is one. 
I just read something that California has a 20 something billion, billion dollar deficit in their budget this year, and we have a 30 something thousand dollars. Um, huh? Oh, sorry, billion uh, surplus. Yeah, surplus. That's a difference when you serve God. That's a difference when you believe in life. God bless that. And so, you know, and, and so, but God has put you in a place. And then some of you, God is going to begin to move geographically. There's some geographic movement that's going to go on. And there's alignment that goes on. Now, Isaiah 65, 8 says the new wine is found in the cluster. What does that mean? It means that there are people that you gather around you, they are your tribe. There are people that you gather around you and they're gonna make your calling higher. Maybe you'll form a prayer group with them or maybe you'll um, uh, you know, do business with them. And when you meet these people that are your tribe, what happens? You feel like you've known them all your life. I mean, you say hello to them and it's like, you think you've known them for like 30 years. Well, some of you are too young for that. You know, five years or 10 years, you know. And, and there are people that I know now, uh, you may not know some of these people, but there's a guy named Chuck Pierce. And when we met Chuck in the 80s, we were like that with Chuck. Uh, Dutch Sheets, uh, uh, just uh, many different leaders. And through the years, Covenant Italy, we have built works in nations. You know, we have gone together as our tribe. And I want to say to you, each of you has your own tribe. You know, uh, you know, when I, I met Ed Savolso, you might not have read his books, where's Alan? I saw, there he is, Alan. Alan's part of the, are you part of his accelerator group? Yeah, I just met a guy at ORU, Ben, that, in the metaverse that's part of that group. Ed Savolso, if you've not read his books, Anointed for Business, if you're going to be in business, you need to read that book. And, but I remember years ago, I prophesied over him that God had always called him to business and he was to write a book on business and he wrote that book. And there's been a lot of symbiotic relationships that you have. Tommy and Miriam Evans right here. You know, when you met Larry Sparks, the publisher of Destiny Image. But when we met Jim and Becky Hennessy, it was like that for us. You know, we, we met and we just knew there was a God connection. Uh, Gabriel and Laura, you know, Anthony, Melissa. In fact, I think it was, An I can't remember if it was Anthony heard uh, when I, I was preaching in the Bronx years ago before they ever came to Christ for the Nations, you knew that you were going to be connected with us, right? Is that what the word was generally? You heard, come here and say that. This is interesting because this is an illustration. And Anthony Medina. This was 2000 and early 2005 actually we were in the Bronx and uh, we got there late because we're Hispanic so we get to places late right and so we're sitting up in the balcony Robert Stearns is finishing worship they invite you up and it's, I go deaf now Melissa's standing next to me clapping the drummer's still drumming and I hear the audible voice of God and he says I'm going to put you and your wife in a place where you're going to learn from that woman and be mentored by her and then the sound comes back on and she begins to say that we're moving our ministry from Colorado Springs back to Dallas, Texas. And then in August of 2005, we're going to the campus of Christ for the Nations to do 40 days of prayer and fasting to uncap the wells of miraculous. And Melissa's standing next to me like, what a coincidence. That's where we're going. I wonder if we'll get to meet her. I think it worked out. And then Melissa volunteered for us for the 40 days. We did 40 days of 24 hour prayer, Christ for the Nations and 10 nights of miracles, so many miracles that just unbelievable how many miracles happened during that time. And so, you know, see how the Holy Spirit did that? I mean, I've had times where I looked at the back of, book, of a book and saw a person's picture and uh, thought I'm gonna know that person. And I did, and preach with that person. You know, uh, Sherman, Sherman honored me. Didn't you say you read my books at Come here, come here. This is this is a good illustration. When you were a student at ORU, we were just at ORU a couple days ago. Yeah, 
yeah, when I was a student at ORU, I came in into contact with your teachings and, uh, and read them for years. And it impacted me greatly in how I saw intercession, how I saw the, the nations, and how I saw the city transformation could happen. And so, yeah, my life was highly impacted by it. And here we are. Here we are. How about that? You know, so I, I want to say to you, God has ways to connect you with people. You know, it's like, like Esther and Mordecai, you know, uh, God connected them and look what they did. And sometimes people are scaffolding people. Now, what does that mean? That means they're, they're in your life for just a little while. But some people are builders with you. And you'll build the kingdom of God with those people. You know, I mean, it's like Laura Allred. Laura came into my house when she was 25 and offered to clean my house. And came to work with us, and you know, look what you did, Laura. How you an amazing preacher girl, you know? And so, so, so I want to pray over you right now, Father. Every connection, lift your hands up. Every connection that needs to happen, those watching online too, Father, we pray these Holy Ghost connections, Holy Spirit connections. The new one is found in the cluster. Now we're going to make those connections for the kingdom purposes, whether it's business, finance, preaching, nations, miracles, teaching, or whatever you're going to do, whatever God has you do, in Jesus' name. Now, you can go write that down. Go write today, God has promised me that I'm going to have divine connections. You see, many times, you know, the Bible talks about a word falling to the ground. And some words don't prosper. Why? Because it's, the Bible says they were mixed with faith. There's many things God has spoken to me, and I would just believe that word, and I would say that word. I was a doer of the word and not a hearer of the word. Uh, I remember a, a friend of mine, I prayed over him in the 90s, and uh, I prophesied that one day someone would come to him and say to him, I want you to come to work for me. And when, and when you tell people about it, they're going to say, you are crazy. They're going to say, you know, don't do it. Like, just shut down your company and go to work for them. So years went by, and uh, he had a friend who was in media who was going to be a pastor. And he had only preached one time. And the pastor came to him and said, uh, Duncan, I want you to help me in media. And he said, well, I have a media company. No, he said, I want you to close down your company and come to work for me. This guy only preached one time. Nobody thought he could preach. And, uh, but he pulled out the word because all his friends were saying, you're crazy. Don't do that. So he went to work for Joel Osteen. And he helped build this media ministry. Come on, clap your hands. You see that? You see? And I could just tell you story after story. This is, thank God you're in a prophetic church. You understand this? Thank God you're in a church that in God's economy wants you to grow and wants you to build. Amen? Amen. We expect all of you to be superstars. Okay? You know, any good parent has ambition for their kid. I mean, my grandchildren are here. Wave at me. I see there's Lily, uh, Liam, Wyatt, you know. Here we go. <laughs> They're looking around. Yeah, and Janae, my daughter-in-law. And, you know, but I have spiritual ambition for them. I want them to do great things. But we can have, we can have sons and daughters in the Lord that we have spiritual ambition for. What do we do? We give our life to help them. We do everything we can so they'll grow, so they'll get, so they'll exceed us. I remember years ago, you know, I started to preach in my late 30s saying things like, someday I'm going to sit down and I'm going to hear my sons and daughters preach. I didn't really have sons and daughters then, you know, in the Lord. And they did. And, you know, I've seen so many of them preach in an excellent way. And that is my joy. So you need to have spiritual ambition for somebody. Can I say that? Find your sons and daughters. You know, find, find your spiritual sons and daughters and, and, and work with them and, and eat with them and, and do life with them. You see? And that, let them be part of your tribe. So what are we saying? God's going to provide for you. God's going to 
Uh, God's going to help you have what you need. Now, let's talk about on the global scale. We're in a global reset right now. I mean, the economists are saying we're in a global reset. It's very interesting. Um, you know, I've had dialogues with prophets. Are, are we wrapping things up? Because a lot of things are happening. A lot of prophecies have been fulfilled. Isaiah 19, you might not know what that is, but it prophesies about a highway of holiness from Egypt to Assyria to Israel. And all along that road right now, there's great moves of God in Iran in the middle of terrible persecution, horrible rioting. There's a massive revival in Iran. There's a massive revival in Afghanistan. Christians are being martyred there. After we pulled out, the Christians started getting killed left and right. And, uh, uh, but, but God is moving. God's moving in Egypt. Mike and I are going to be in Egypt, and we're, wanna, we're going to meet with prophets from all over the Middle East coming up. Exciting time. So there's a global reset. However, Satan is trying to do his reset, but God is doing his reset. And even in America, we're at the beginning of an awakening. You don't, you don't know, maybe you're not in that particular hot spot, but I promise you, talking to my friends who preach, they say they've never seen more miracles. They've never seen more people getting saved. It's just a time, right, Tommy and Miriam, you know, you're out there redigging wells and miracles, and a lot is happening. But God wants you to be part of that harvest. You see, don't, don't, don't miss this move of God. Can I say that to you? You know, don't miss this move of God. You be part of it. I have spiritual ambition for you. I want God to do great things through you. You know what? A great God lives in you, so there's, and there's no junior Holy Spirit, so none of you are just small in the kingdom of God. None of you are insignificant in the kingdom of God. You are very significant in God's kingdom. But you've got to accept that. You see, life can bang you up and make you feel like you are unimportant. Well, you know what? I can prove you're important. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son the first greatest gift. Talk about someone with a gift of giving was God. And he did it for you. And if you were the only one, Jesus would have died for you. What a magnificent gift. Don't waste it. Don't be some boring, dumb individual. You know, people say, well, you know, I've had people come and say, well, I have physical, you know, a handicap, and, you know, they're waiting for healing or whatever. I remember praying over a, a lady I was on TV in an Oregon. She came in a wheelchair, and uh, she said, what can I do for God? And I got a word of knowledge. I said, you can write letters to prisoners. And she started writing letters to prisoners. And it became a massive ministry, writing letter, letters to prisoners. You see, what's in your hand? What's in your hand? You see, there are abilities in your hand that you need to develop. There's abilities in your hand and ways God wants to use you. But so many Christians are just lazy. Don't be a lazy Christian. Don't be content to live a dumb, boring life. Listen, if Mike and I could go all over the world, I've lost track how many nations we're going to this year because the nations are opening up again. And we're turning down more invitations than we could possibly go to. So what do we need? We need laborers in the harvest field. That's why, you know, Sherman and, you know, different Matt and you, Tim, you, you, you be that laborer. Mike and I are in our third quarter. There'll be a day we go to be with Jesus. I talked about heaven this morning. Hi, Selena. I talked about heaven this morning. How wonderful it's going to be. No wrinkles. No aches. Now, nah, some of you think, what's a big deal? No wrinkles. You're not over 70. Anyway. <laughs> I mean, I can't wait for it. I, but, you know, I, and I long for the Lord's return. You know, we say, Maranatha, come back, Jesus. But I personally pray this on the end of that. 
not without the Middle East. Can we get the Middle East saved? Can I show you this list of unreached people groups? Can I show you the list of people who don't know Jesus yet? That's why we have to have laborers in the harvest field. That's why we need you. Every single one of you. You were born for a purpose. You were born in this time of great awakening. You know, maybe you've heard me tell this story or not. I don't have much time left. But when I was in college, I went to Grand Canyon. And uh, we only had 600 people in Grand Canyon at that time. And, you know, we had a group we called the God Squad. And every Saturday morning, we'd meet together and we'd pray for the harvest. And we'd ask God for souls. And we'd get a little, one of us had a guitar. and I mean, I don't know, it was about 10 of us. And we'd just go for God together. And then we'd pray, what part of the city are we supposed to evangelize? So we'd choose a neighborhood for target practice, you know. And we'd go, and we had our little four spiritual laws. I mean, does anybody know what that is, four spiritual? Some of you are my age or whatever, or younger. But it's just how to be saved. So we just go house to house, just knocking on people's doors. Listen, one of the words is evangelism over Trinity and over this season. Somebody's got to evangelize. And so anyway, it was crazy. I remember this one house, they were doing witchcraft and levitating and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But what goes up has to come down, they got saved. And, uh, you know, but we were just fervent for Jesus. I mean, Red, hot, passionate for Jesus. I want you to be too. God wants you to be. And we began when the Holy Spirit was moving, we talked about hunger. We talked about burning. Listen, if you want to get on fire, get next to somebody that's burning. Okay? Get next to somebody that's on fire for God. And you be on fire. Even when I was a young girl, I would think how people needed Jesus. I mean, I'm just, just on fire. It doesn't happen automatically. It's a choice. The Lord told us this is going to be a season of recovering all. God's going to divinely intervene to restore lost finances, property, relationship. Anybody lost anything? We have. I mean, we've made investments before that were dumb, you know, because we trusted our friends. Some of them were preachers. Okay. Okay. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> but you know what? We're calling it back. We're calling it back. And I'm calling it back for you. Okay. Divine restoration. God wants you to recover. We found out that one of Mike's relatives had owned like three counties of Tennessee and gambled it all away. And all of a sudden, we had a light bulb go off in our head, and we're like, wait a minute. That should be our money. That should be our kids' money. So we just called it back. We started calling it back, houses and lands. And you know what? It's working. Now, that was, that was a big amen minute. You told me to miss that. Let's try it again. It's working. Yeah. Amen. Well, there's so much more. So much more. But I think I'm going to stop there. I have come today to mark every one of you, those listening online. I've come to mark you. I've come if you need it to shake you out of complacency. I want you to study. Study about the past moves of God. Do you know in Dallas, in South Dallas, we are the birthplace of revival? I mean, Catherine Coleman preached here. Oral Roberts preached here. The great healing evangelist, Voice of Healing, started here. I mean, there was a movement in something called the Bronco Bowl, which was in Oak Cliff. And many, many miracles happened. And Oak Cliff is in the Guinness World Book of Records for the most churches on one street. We want the Oak Cliff back. We want our inheritance. We're a well. And I think I've said it before, but 
the first revival in all North Texas was in a little town called a villa right around the corner. The Shiloh Revival. Impresarios from the Cane Ridge Revival moved from Kentucky, moved to Ovilla at the call of God. And, and from there, the Shiloh Revival came. And many, many, many were saved. And that's just, I live in Ovilla. Just around the corner in the well. And believe me, we have redone those wells. And we're believing God to do great and mighty things. So it's our inheritance. God has put us here as Trinity Church. Listen, we don't want somebody else to get our inheritance. I mean, I love the north side. Maybe you live on the north. But I think the south side needs inheritance. And there's a reason that we're here and not another place. Amen? So you got it? Cluster anointing, global reset. God's resetting many nations and economy. And, and that you could be a Goshen and God could take care of you. Are you understanding this? And hunger for God. We're in an awakening. And God wants you to be awakeners. Would you stand to your feet, please? Amen. I think we should just shout unto God. Hallelujah.